The raging wind threw sharp snowflakes into their eyes and faces. Visibility was reduced to a few feet, and although it was almost noon, the day was as dark as dawn. And in the swirling, stinging whiteness, stumbling through knee-deep snow, some fell and lost their hold. By the time the travellers reached the relative shelter of the forest edge, the raging gale was lashing the tops of the pine trees, bending them almost horizontal. The roar of the wind through the pines was almost deafening. The branches above the woodfolk provided scant cover, and only standing in the lee of the trees reduced the force of the icy wind. But when the woodfolk and sorcerers, frozen and wet, took stock, they realised that nearly a quarter of their number was missing. String and Bean gathered them together, urging them to stay within the trees and wait for the others. They peered out around the trees, but the storm was at its height and only a haze of driven snow greeted their eyes. String shook his head and shouted above the noise of the storm, There's no point in going back out into that. Look, our tracks are almost gone already. You won't find them and you'll become lost yourselves. Let's hope they're all together and we'll find their way to shelter, yelled Bean. He looked around. Who's missing? Tree Wind replied, but her voice blended in too well with the wind to be heard. When String shook his head and put his hand to his ear, Thunderstorm repeated what she had said, his voice rumbling loudly against the noise of the storm. Tarkin's missing. Midnight, water stone, lapping water, melting snow, running feet, falling rain. What about Sparrow? I'm here came a small voice from the back. When everyone looked around, they saw her clinging determinedly to Creaking Bow's hand. Anyone else? yelled String. Harkle! bellowed Danton. Falling Branch pushed to the front. Rainstorm's not here either. Neither is Autumn Leaves. What are we going to do? demanded Danton. We can't just sit here letting them freeze out there. He turned to the old wizard. Storm away! Can you do anything to get rid of this storm? The wizard shook his head. This storm is huge. It would take me over an hour to have any effect on it. Even then I'm not sure that I would have enough power. Tree wind, thunderstorm, can you contact them? Can you direct them towards us? The wood folk went out of focus, sending their minds out to find the others. After a few minutes, thunderstorm breathed a sigh of relief and reported, It's all right. A couple of them lost their footing, and the others stopped to help them up and lost contact with the rest of us. They are all together and just approaching the tree line now. But the minutes ticked by, and still there was no sign of them. Another round of mind-talking produced the information that the lost group had reached the tree line, but still they were not in sight. They must have veered off slightly and entered the forest either above or below us, shouted Bean. Suddenly, an image of huge, twisted, deciduous trees, untouched by the raging wind, came through to the wood folk from melting snow. The images meant nothing to most of them, but galvanized hail and blizzard. Blizzard shouted at String and Bean, They're lost! They're nowhere near us! Somehow they've entered the lost forest! String stared at them. I didn't know that was real! I thought it was a myth. Hale glared back. It is a myth, but so is Tarkin. So what do we do? shouted Bean. We seek shelter. Hale's voice brooked no argument. There's nothing we can do for them.